free Tuesday, second and uh, third and fourth Sunday, whatever Sunday we're here. You know, we're here a couple times a month. Um, so uh, what we do is we pray, and then I uh, uh, give you a message of some sort, and then we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> of some sort. <laughs> you know, I'm just as surprised as you guys have done half the time. I always start yeah. with a piece of paper, but it never goes to plan like uh-huh. that. So I just, go, I just go with the flow of what God does with us. So why don't we ask God's blessing on what we do tonight, and then we'll go from there. Thank you, God. Uh, Father, Thank we just you. praise you for who you are. We praise you for these incredible women. <laughs> that, uh, you would uh, call them daughters of the Most High. What, a, what, a, what an awesome thing, Lord. Amen. We just thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do here tonight. We know that your word never returns empty. So somebody, maybe just one person, but somebody in here is going to hear a message tonight that uh, is directly from you to their heart. So, Lord, we, we just praise you for that. We ask the Holy thank Spirit you, to be powerful in what we're doing here tonight. Maybe your words through my lips. And uh, let's just have a great worship. Let's just have a great time knowing that you are sovereign, that you have us. You give us provision, protection, uh, blessings, all the things that we need in our lives, including discipline and guidance. Um, but, Lord, those are good, too. So, Lord, just be with us as we do what we do here tonight. Praise in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All righty. So I was talking to a guy the other day, and about a week and a half ago, and he was, he was having a hard day. Uh, he, he's an ex-con, and, and he's got to kind of rebuild his whole life. And uh, I was talking to him about it, and he was kind of grating over this idea of having to rebuild things. You know, he's like, I should be this, and I should be that, and you know, I should have, would have, could have. And uh, I told him, I said, look, you know, you got to build back brick by brick. It's just a brick at a time. you got to build back brick by brick. And I was thinking about that, and I realized, yeah, I got to kind of put in my head, you know how many building projects there are in the Bible? There, there's several. There's, there's Noah's Ark. That was a building project. They had the tabernacle in the, in the, when they were in the wilderness. They had to build the tent tabernacle. They had the Ark of the Covenant they had to build. They had to build the wall with Nehemiah. They had to rebuild all of Jerusalem's walls. They had to build Solomon's temple, which is a pretty, pretty big building project. And when you read these building projects, they built it brick by brick. But it's amazing how exacting God is, right? You shall build it five cubits, not four, not three, not seven, five cubits. <laughs> you shall learn, there, there's one I was reading about, about the uh, Noah's Ark, and I never really realized this before, but it says, make it of gopher wood. Gopher wood. Have you ever heard of gopher wood? I've heard of acacia wood. Everything's made of acacia wood, but no, this was, this was special. It had to have gopher wood, and it had to be a certain kind of tar, and, and there's materials and some skills, and there's all sorts of things that go into these building projects. And I was thinking about my buddy. And I was like, you know, this is really instructive. And these are kind of what the, the what we call the biblical psalmonex of, of Scripture. And you get to these building projects, and it's like, you, you just page after page after page of instruction. You're like, wow, this is just boring me. Can I skip it? And no, you shouldn't, because it's instructive. And here's why it's instructive. There's a process God uses to have us build our lives back brick by brick. And... It goes along the same lines as, as these building projects. So I want to share with you what God revealed to me in this. And uh, uh, I'll, be, I'll be transparent because I don't always do it. So do as I say, not as I do, right? Uh-huh. Anybody, anybody's parents tell that? My dad yeah, told like, that. Yeah. Hated that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so here, here's the process. Step one, follow the instructions. <laughs> Follow the instructions. You ever build anything? Like I get, I, I know I'm gonna get in trouble right here. So <laughs> I build, I'll like get a shelving and build, right? Read the instructions. Stop! I'm about to tell the story. <laughs> I read the instructions. I read them a little fast, and, 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 and I'll be there. And inevitably, no matter what I build, something's upside down or backwards, or because I really didn't like follow the instructions. I'm really bad at following instructions because I have a short attention span and I'm, I'm a kind of a go, go, go guy. And it's like, oh yeah, that's exactly, I look at it and go, that's exactly what you do. And then I get done and the, the shelves upside down and the lacquer's the wrong way. And I gotta tear the whole thing apart again. Um, and uh, that's bad. <laughs> you, know, you know, if you look at, look at these building projects, there are a lot of instructions and you had to follow them step by step. Now, how, how many like to follow things step by step? I bring my wife. Yeah, right. <laughs> I call those people linear thinkers. So they can All else fails. We've got two linear thinkers, thinkers, thinkers with Lisa here. <laughs> linear thinking are the people that have to go A, B, yeah, C. That's right. 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 Yeah. For guys like me, that's like sticking a pencil in my eye. <laughs> Stop. Oh my God. Can we just get to the end? I'll tell you a funny story about Lisa. So we were in the <laughs> 
Yeah. And grandmother was great. <coughs> and we went to this little museum thing. Lisa's a linear thinker, right? So we go in, we all start at the same place. Grandma and I get through the thing, and we're done. And we're looking for Lisa. She's still at plaque number one reading it. You don't read all the plaques. You look at the thing and go, oh, that's nice. You move on to the next one, right? So Grandma and I were kind of global thinkers. We went to uh, Sarsaparilla or something and waited for Lisa to finish up. Uh, so linear thinkers do really well with instructions. Those of us that are not that way, the ABC types, man, that's really hard for us. And so what we do is we don't do things in order, right? We skip we skip things. We go, oh yeah, well, I'll, I'll just skip the next thing. And that's why you have to do it again. Thanks, thanks, Till. <laughs> that's why I have to do it again, yes. Till's always there for me. She's always got to be back. That's what I appreciate about her so much. Um, it very much is. We skip steps. And instead of doing things in order, we think, well, you know, I can just go in this step. Right? And, and that doesn't really work in God's economy. In, in, in this, if, if they're building the Ark of the Covenant, and they get the acacia wood, and then they try to uh, go right to the gold overlay, and they don't do the other things they're supposed to do. That's not going to work. That's not going to build the way he says. And we know that God is very, very serious about follow my instructions. So we all get to a place sometimes where we don't want to do it in the order it's given us. Well, same with life, right? Same with building back your life brick by brick. We all want it to be the end. We want to be independent. We want relationships restored. We want reconciliation. We want God's blessings, God's provision, God's protection. The discipline, eh, we, can, we can skip that part. We don't like that. We never like that. Right? Yeah. Some of us got the holy two by four mark across the forehead. <laughs> you missed that step. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, we all like to do that. And, and so this is the instruction from God in this first part. Follow the instructions. Do it in order. The second part that's really interesting to me, and why I, I joke that it's biblical psalm and I told you because she put you to sleep, you can't make a shortcut. There's no shortcuts. And when you're building your life back, and you're, you're putting your life back together, there are no shortcuts. Um, I remember I've had my house of cards, so to speak, fall down a couple times. And uh, lost everything. And to build back up is not simply going, well, you know, I had it all before. I'm just going to go back, live where I was, be around the same people I was, and do the same things I was, and I'm going to get the same thing I had. Right. Doesn't work that way. Right? Uh, what happens is there's a thing called new normal. And so life happens, and you have what they call new normal. And you're going to have a new experience, a new, a new blessing. Sometimes God will steal, take a blessing from you because you mishandled it. And then you get a new blessing. Right? And that's okay. But you can't approach the new blessing trying to take a shortcut to the old blessing. Mm -hmm. Because that old blessing, you lost it. I don't see anybody in scripture who lost a blessing and got it back. No. They got new things, but they didn't get old things. And so we try to make shortcuts, though, to our old life. And so <laughs> if you were someone who uh, was living a certain lifestyle, man, you want that lifestyle back. It's like, well, not so much. God's going to close those doors right now. And you keep on running into the door and wondering, why am I hitting my head so much on this door? And not realizing God's saying, mm -mm, that, that's not where you're going. There's a new normal here. And you're not going to make a shortcut around my instructions for you. You're going to build this brick by brick, and you're going to do it my way. And then people say, well, I don't like that God. <laughs> that God's no fun, right? Uh, did you have your hand up? No, I'm sorry. I was just thinking about what you were saying. That's okay. You can wave at me. Okay. I, I, I like interactions. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> So there's no shortcuts. There's also no loopholes. Now, loopholes are different than shortcuts. Shortcuts is you want to you miss a step. A loophole is you're finding a way not to do the step fully. <laughs> right? And that's what I do when I build things. I, uh, <laughs> they'll say, you know, got to do this thing with a hammer or a screwdriver. I'm like, ah, heck, I do it. Hit it with my hand. <laughs> what are you laughing at me? It happens. <laughs> and, and then it falls apart when I'm done. I'm like, oh, I probably should have used the screwdriver or the hammer. Uh, I, I always like loopholes because it gets me there faster. It's not that I skipped a step. I just don't do it the way I'm told to do it because I think I can do it better, faster than anybody else. And then I find out later, Jill, that I have to rebuild it. <laughs> and so, so in our instructions, one, we got to follow the instructions. A lot of us don't like the instructions. Okay? Life's instructions are hard. Life is a contact sport. You know, you're going you're gonna to get your nose bloody by it. Life is hard. But there's a process. And God wants you to go through his process. And part of that process is submitting your will to his will. John the Baptist said, I must be less, he must be more. Yes. And that is a hard, hard thing to do. Jesus said, you have to die to yourself. 
Uh, what that means is y'all have impulses, right? Did you hear that? That was beautiful. <laughs> right on time. So we all have impulses. What happens if we act out on all our impulses? We don't always make the right choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine what it would happen to me if I acted out on my impulses? Holy mackerel. Police would be visiting me in jail. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? <laughs> we don't get to act on our impulses. We have to die to self. And we have to put God's law ahead of us. That's part of this building process. And then when we do it God's way, that's when he can bless. That's when he can give provision. That's what he can protect. And it's not what you think it's going to be. And that's the other thing. Is we have expectations that are like here. And God says, well, that's not where I'm bringing you. I'm bringing you over here. And so your expectations get kind of uh, missed. And you think God's mean because he's not giving you what you expected. And so it really is uh, a lot in this instruction part about understanding what God's doing with you. Because there's a process here. Now, how many billions of people have lived before you? A lot. A lot. Good. Good. Good, good answer. Hundred billion. Hundred billion. About hundred billion. Right. Wow. There's nothing you're going through that someone else didn't go through. Nothing. That's why Solomon said, "There's nothing new under the sun." Yet sometimes we feel our circumstances are so unique and no one could possibly understand because what we're, what our thing. And it is individually, but within the spectrum of God's economy, you're not going through anything that any, anybody else hasn't. And if you look at how God handles his people, he's going to handle you the same way. Now here's another thing. If you notice how God's hand is on you through your history, if you look back and say, you know, where was God? That's a great question. Where was God when? you got to ask that question. And you see a pattern. God's very consistent. He will be in the same places as he's always been. And if you recognize where he's been, you're going to know where he's going to be. And that allows you to build brick by brick a little easier because you don't feel like you're alone. Which is a great segue, I didn't even plan that, to my second point, which is, if you ever notice some building project, God would bring his Holy Spirit upon people to give them gifts to, so they mm -hmm. have the skills? Yes. You can't build your brick by brick alone. No. Now, this is a hard part because we're so prideful, we don't want help. Uh, I cannot tell you how many times, ooh, just move it up closer so you can hear better. Good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing to me in the ministry that Lisa and I do people will call us for help which is fantastic they call us about three months too late right they always call when they're oh my gosh I'm getting evicted now <laughs> it's like how, how, how many months behind are you and you're oh, five months behind where were you five months ago calling me where I really could help and do something and now you're really 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 in trouble and my hands are tied what can I do I mean, it's really hard to be in that crisis management place, right? Well, that's because people don't get the skilled people that God has for you to build brick by brick. That you don't get them around. And there's two kinds of people. There's ones that have skills you don't have, right? That you got to get around because I, there's lots of skills I don't have. Uh, I know it's shocking, but it's true. <laughs> I, I hire people for things. Uh, but I bring these people in because they have skills I don't have, and I'm not going to do it because why would I work to my weaknesses? Three people in and know what they're doing. And then two, there's these things called divine appointments. Mm -hmm. There are people that God has specifically gifted to help walk with you to do the thing you cannot possibly do to get you to your next brick. Right? But we don't seek those people out of embarrassment, out of shame, out of pride, out of shyness. You know, I, I don't want to bother anybody. You know, you just kind of, and, then, and then you hide behind this, the Christian skirt of one being humble. <laughs> you ever see people do that? Yeah. They hide behind all the Christianese. No, I hate Christianese, by the way. Uh, I, I think that, that we've got to understand that, that asking for help is what God created us to do. God yeah. said, love me and love each other. Everything we do is our relationship. And so if you have a skill I don't have, guess who I'm calling? I'm calling you because I need help. And as Christian brothers and sisters, we should be always able to not just get that phone call, but actually act on it. Now, I'll tell you a funny story. So when I got into ministry, uh, 2013, I went into full-time ministry. I wrote a book, and I was meeting with pastors and, and you know, about the book and different things I was doing. And I was in business for a long time. And it was always easier to do a strategic partnership with a complete stranger in business than it was ever to do it with another church, pastor, or Christian. Sure. And I was stunned by that because um, one of the things I did in life was I, I facilitated groups of people getting together who usually wouldn't get together. 
and I was, I was pretty good at it. You know, I would put a table together of people who never met each other, uh, and we would work toward a similar goal. And what well, is that Christianity? Get a group of people that never met each other that are very different from very different backgrounds. We all coalesce around around Jesus, and we pull the same rope, and we do stuff together. That's the church. No, no. that's not the church. <laughs> Unfortunately. And and so I would tell you that we can't fall into that trap because that's that's not scriptural. Scriptural is you got a problem, I'm here to help. Or I've got a problem, you're here to help, right? Any way you can. And so we've got to get through this idea of uh, we've got gifted people, but I'm not going to ask them for help because of whatever my barrier is. Because Christ said it was finished. There are no barriers. Pride is a big one. Pride is a big one, isn't it, Jelly? Yes, yeah, it yeah, I'm watching it. <laughs> so when we think about, about this, um, you got to be one one little caveat. You got to pick people that want to build the same project as you. You ever invite someone in that has a skill and then they want to take over your project and tell you how to do it? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you love it? Oh man, too many cooks in the kitchen. Right? You got to get people with the skill sets that want to build your project, the one that God has put in place, not the one that they foresee, not the one that they envision, not what they think you should be doing. Right? You take it. You take the advice. You take the critical. Uh, 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 concerns of theirs, and you, you play them out, but you don't let them control your walk. Yeah, they get mad at you. Yeah, they do. <laughs> and that's so you got to be careful about who you're inviting in. And really, it's about making sure the people you're inviting are really in the faith. Really in the faith. Now, this is controversial, but scripture says that uh, you believe in God, great, so do the demons. <laughs> <laughs> Right? You're nothing special just because you believe. Are you walking the walk? Are you transformed? Are you striving every day to become more Christ-like? Do you understand your position as a sinner who's been saved? Do you get grace and mercy and justice and all that? Do you Are, are you really sold out? Or are you just going to church on Sunday and Wednesday night and spaghetti dinners? Right? And so you want people around you that are sold out, that really will sacrifice, because all service is sacrifice. You want somebody to sacrifice for and someone who will sacrifice to. And so God, uh, it's great in these things. He said, okay, you're going to be able to build a wall, and you're going to be able to do gold, and you're going to be able to do, like, uh, sculpturing or whatever. And he put his Holy Spirit on him to do that. Now, here's something fascinating. How many people in the room tonight? Everyone. Okay. Uh, <laughs> how much experience is in this room right now? A lot. A ton of experience, right? And very, and very different experiences. Some of it's the, the school of hard knocks experience. Some of it's education, some of it's work, some of it's, you know, passion. So who knows what it is, right? What if you all were to get together and do something by using all your experiences for the same purpose? Would you not be unstoppable? Yes. Yeah. Now, would you ever think about doing that? No. No. <laughs> you know, there's too many barriers, and these barriers are these man-made, worldly, satanic, demonic kind of, I don't like that person, or this person's this, and, that, 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 and all this stuff. It gets in the way of us truly being a body of Christ to help one another to do the things that we should be doing. Now, here's what's, what I think is really fascinating. If, oh, I'll, say, I'll say 35, 40 people. If you all went out and told two people that you knew that I'll never get to about Jesus, mm -hmm. imagine that. Because you know people I don't know. I don't know. I'll never, I'll never meet your friends. But you, you, you could tell them. Tell this weird guy, Samaka, just yammer it away. But we don't. We don't really do. We don't encourage. This. We don't lift each other up. We don't support each other. And that's part of this gifting piece about putting people around us to help us in our walk to build a brick by brick. So let's say you've got a, uh, a reconciliation with family issue. Okay? That, that, that can be a big issue. It could be a really hard one. Uh, there's other people that have done it Yeah. that can walk you through it, can talk to you about how it works and how, when, where, where it doesn't work. <laughs> you know, tell you where the, where the uh, potholes are in this thing. Let's say you got a court thing. There are other people who've been to court. Well, this process works, right? You got an expungement issue. There's other people who've done expungements. But we're so ashamed and afraid of people knowing us that we won't, we won't ask. We'll just suck it up. Knowing what our imperfections are. Yeah. 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 And so the, the instruction I would tell you when you're getting help by brick by brick is be transparent. 
What's the worst that can happen if someone actually knows you? Right. They may not like me. <laughs> Who cares? You don't want them in your life anyway. Right? You don't want the people who don't like you in your life. Right. Why would you want them? Mm-hmm. You only want people to go, it's all right, man. I've been worse. That's why Paul says, at one point he says, of all the sinners in the room, I'm the worst. He's making people understand that I'm no better than you. I'm, I'm in the same boat. And, and I would tell you, the same that would go with me. Of all the sinners in the room, I'm the worst. There's nothing you've done I haven't thought of or done. And so we're all in the same, we're all in the same place. We all need Jesus. And we all need help. So the last part about this, there's there's I, I can't believe I wrote a three-point sermon. I never do that. The last part is this, and this is where I get screwed up too. Don't stop until it's done. So I'm building my bookshelf. Again. And I get done. Please I get done. And there's always leftover stuff. And I don't know where this leftover stuff comes from. And I read the instructions again. And I'm like, there shouldn't be leftover stuff. It doesn't say that. But I always end up with like a two two nuts and a bolt or a screw or something. I have no idea why. I have a whole drawer full of stuff of extra little packages of things that were supposed to go in whatever I built that aren't in. Because I didn't finish it to completion. I finished it to when I was tired or got done or, or was too frustrated to keep going on. One of the things that happens by our brick by brick, we're trying to build our lives back, right? Mm-hmm. Is we get frustrated. The bricks aren't going together in the right places that we want. The mortar's not holding. There's setbacks. When you look at the story of Nehemiah building the wall, and he goes back, he's, he gets out of, uh, of uh, the Persians, let him go, comes back to Jerusalem, the walls are down, he's got to rebuild the walls. There are adversaries, there are people trying to keep him from doing it. You know, there are people in the, in the land that didn't want the Jews to come back. And they were causing him trouble. And so he had people building a wall, and other people with spears and swords ready for the bad guys to come get them. Because th- there was just, this was not going to be an easy task. And it was very frustrating. So we have to overcome adversity. And this is probably the hardest part. Uh, if I can get real for you for a second. When we hit adversity, we get, we get triggered. And whatever our issues are get triggered when we hit adversity. And our trigger then causes us to spin. When we start to spin, what do we want to do? We want to escape. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So everyone has their different escapisms, right? Mm-hmm. Some people drink. Some people do drugs. Some people gamble. Some people do porn. Some people are workaholics. Some people are, are uh, uh, like me. I, I have this thing in my brain where I need to dissociate. I get on Facebook and just scroll. I'm not looking at anything. But for an hour, my wife gets busy. She's what are you doing? checked out. It's too much. My brain, my brain's shutting down. And we all do this. This is kind of a self-defense mechanism when, when we get triggered because we all have these issues. But when the adversity comes and we don't keep going, we don't get through it, we can't build our house back. Everyone's like, woo, all right. It's like Pentecostal woman. It's hot. Like, <laughs> I like that too. I'm with you. So, uh, Overcoming adversity, I think, is the hardest part of the steps. Nehemiah showed us that you, you build defenses to get over your adversities. But you're smart. You think about, as I'm building my, my, my bricks, what could be the possible adversity I face? People may, may not support me. People may not forgive me. People may still judge me. I may not have the finances. I may not have the, the logistics. I may not have family. There's all sorts of things we can come up with of why I can't get to where I'm getting to. But I would ask you the same question I asked a friend of mine the other day. I, was, I send out little uh, memes or encouragements to people. And this one guy wrote back, and, and he, he, he's, he struggles. And he's just like, I don't really believe. I said, well, is God's arm too short? Is God's arm too short? He's like, no. So shut up. <laughs> God's arm's not too short. Whatever, you're, whatever the things are that you're seeing as adverse, God can overcome. Only if you partner with him. So that's the first one. Second part, uh, no, what I call mission creep. This is a big one. I, I work with a lot of, especially nonprofit organizations, and nonprofit organizations will have good-hearted people that want to do a specific thing, but there's a lot of good things to do in there, and so they start to expand the mission, and the mission, and the mission. Also, they're not doing this anymore. They're doing all this, and really not being effective in anything because they're not focused on the mission. Right. They're focused on the creep, right? And we do that in our lives. We get distracted. We have a mission. You guys have a mission here, right? 
Your mission is to get strong enough in the Lord so that you can be independent and lead your lives the way God yes. created you. Mm -hmm. Period. Yes. That's it. That's your That's mission. It. And anything that doesn't align with that mission, don't do. Yeah. How many of you are doing things outside that mission? <laughs> Every one of us are. Come on. We all are. Yeah. We all get mission creep. Because it's a little shiny. <laughs> right? so we find things. And, yeah, and there's funny things about it is, is it's not bad things. One of the ways Satan gets you, and this is, might surprise you, is he doesn't give you bad things. He gives you good things to distract you from the best things. That's really true. Yeah, exactly. Right? So you might be asked to do something that's, that's really good, but it's not your mission. It's not the best thing. I have to have them. You know, I really had to discipline myself because I was asked to sit on these boards of directors and things like that. I thought some of them aligned with my mission, but as soon as I found out they didn't, I quit because I thought, oh, no, I know I'm getting involved in things that just God does not want me involved in. Even right. though I have the skills, even though I, I like it, even though I think they're good people, I can't do this. It's not the mission. And so you have to protect your mission just like fiercely. So anybody that wants to distract you, um, you know, some guy comes into your life. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it, man, are stupid. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't get distracted. Right. Your mission is to become so filled with the Holy Spirit that you are so transformed that you get independence back. You can live a life for God that he wants you to live the way he made you to live. That's the mission. And make sure everything aligns to it. Right? And then lastly, um, I would say persevere. Persevere. Suck it up, cupcake. Sometimes life's hard. Yep. But you've survived 100% of what you've been through. Chances are good you'll survive the next thing too. Yep. Persevere. Yep. Build on your strengths, right? Mm -hmm. So, all of us are in a rebuilding process somewhere, somehow in our lives. Everyone is. Everyone's broken. Now, some people recognize they're in a rebuilding process and take it seriously and are working toward it. Some people mm, don't. Don't be around those people. They're just going to drag you down. Be around people that want to build you brick by brick. They want to walk with you. They want to be with you. And then, I would say, follow God's outline. Follow the instructions, get the help you need, and don't stop until it's done. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Good to see you guys.